Good morning guys, my name's Sandy, this is Sawing with Sandy. We just had a pretty good rain here just a moment ago and luckily for me my roof held together, my new sawmill shed that is. And so my sawmill is perfectly dry, I am ready to cut and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now before we get any further, what I'm going to talk about specifically today is something that I hear from you guys talking about quite a bit. Now I don't mean down in the comment section necessarily, but what I mean is on some of those social media groups, you guys know the ones, you might be a part of them, I actually watch those groups and I, uh, I see what's going on with sawing in general. I want to I wanna get a sense of what everyone's up to and although I don't really talk much in those groups, I am watching and seeing what many of you guys are actually up to and so I want to talk about something I'm seeing coming up over and over and over again. And what it comes down to is cut quality. Now, just to exemplify this, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a few cuts on this red pine log over here. You guys see it there? I'm gonna make a few cuts on there with the blade that I know should have already been changed out for a sharp one. What happens is people will start cutting. They'll cut for, you know, several hours. And then as they sort of get on in their, uh, in their cutting day, what'll happen is they'll start to notice the boards get a bit of a wave to them. And what they'll do is they'll try to figure out what that wave is the result of. And nine times out of 10, in my experience, it comes down to a blade that is partially sharp, but not sharp enough to cut and not sharp enough to cut perfectly flat. And so I'm going to show you exactly uh, what that looks like. And just so you know what's coming, here's the board, okay? And I just cut this board yesterday. Have a look down there. What do you guys notice? I'm looking at the left edge there. It's wavy right we flip it up on edge i don't know if you can see it any better look at the waves in that thing that is usually the source of the frustration for many of you uh, because you want to make nice lumber some of you are selling it some of you are using it for uh, your own projects but regardless you want to make some nice lumber that's okay for projects like this out the sawmill shed but this is probably not going to do it if you got paying customers or even if you know you want a nice square piece of wood so I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like to cut with a blade that's partially sharp, partially dull, and a blade that's perfectly sharp. Over on my forks over there, you guys can see I got a brand new box of HM130, uh, what do you call them, Lennox blades. I'm going to open that up. We're going to get a brand new blade on after I make a few cuts with the old one. And you guys can judge for yourself exactly what the difference is between the two blades, an older one that's made some cuts and a brand new one. So glad you guys are here to join me. Hopefully we're done making those wavy cuts because although sometimes I let it go just because I don't have the blades out here, uh, I don't like letting it go too often. Guys, here we go.
All right, guys, just taking a quick break here. As you saw a moment ago, I cut all four sides off that log, those four sides right here. I like to call my slab wood or off cuts. What I'll do with this, oftentimes I'll run it through the chipper, as you can see here. That'll make some nice chips, and I can put that in the low spots of my trails. Sometimes I'll throw this down in wet spots as, as a whole, just to act as a bit of a corduroy road. And other times I'll give it to some people who ask me for it, and they'll use it for things like siding on an outbuilding. Anyways, that's that. What we're left with is our cant here. As you can see, it looks pretty good from a, from a distance, that is. Uh, it is square right now, so the log bunks, the log stops are at a perfect 90 degree angle. And so when I cut, everything is square, but it's got waviness to it. And that's no good. If you're selling your lumber, no one wants wavy boards. And so you gotta get it fixed. If you guys have a close look at this, you'll be able to see the waves quite easily, especially if we duck down here. Look along the bottom of that cant. You guys see that? Check that out right there. Bit of a hump there. Goes up here. Bit of a hump here. Goes up there, etc. If we look at the top of the cant, you might be able to see the same thing, especially if you look down the end, maybe on this side. You see how it goes in and out a little bit? Well, that's no good. On this side, you might not be able to tell as well here because I've got some very little bit of bark still there, but uh, you saw it on the other sides. Another indicator that you have waves is you don't even have to look at the cant. Just look away and run your hand over it and you'll feel it. And I can feel it right there. I can feel the subtle ups and downs. That is no good. Uh, if you try to sell that, well, people probably won't be happy with you, as I said. So we got to get that figured out. How you get rid of that, in my experience, is put on a brand new or at least a brand newly sharpened blade. And so we're going to uh, switch out this blade here. I know that's been uh, well used and it's been overused. So we're going to get a sharp blade on there and you guys will be able to see the difference. Now, uh, what we're going to have to do here, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to put a new blade on. And I'm going to take off maybe an eighth of an inch on this cant. That way, when I flip it over and cut my lumber, you guys will see on the left side of that lumber, the old blade, you'll see the waves. And then on the right side, you'll see where it was cut with the new blade. That way you can compare them. So let's make our way over here. Here is my brand new blade. So I just got these in the mail. These are made by Lennox. Woodland Mill sells these. I think the price on these, 245 Canadian for 10. Add tax in there, add some shipping. You're probably at the better part of 30 bucks a blade to get them to my house, Canadian. Uh, we're going to open this up and then we'll throw it on the sawmill, not literally, and we'll make some cuts. Here we go. Looking good. All right, at this point, I am going to put my gloves on. You guys can see here, we've got a zip tie in the middle, but that's not really doing anything. It's this wire on the edge that does everything. One here and one there. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna open this right here because there's some uh, built up tension there. I don't want it to spring back and cut me. I'm actually gonna just pull it on the ground and I'll just put a board over it and then I'll cut the metal. And uh, then again, it should just uh, release nice and easy. And easy as that. All right. Now I don't have my full weight on that. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to bend the teeth or anything. All I was doing, I was putting most of my weight, as you guys could see on this foot. And I just sort of had my foot resting on this. I'm not, uh, I'm not jumping on this thing. You bend the teeth while well, you're not going to have good cutting.
Okay, and just by having that board there, you guys could see it also made it so that uh, when I finally did release it, it released away from me. I'm just getting it close at this point <clears throat> and by close I mean I'm uh, I'm making it so the back of the blade is flush with the back of the band wheels once I'm close I'll just add a little bit of tension very little check to make sure it's in here looks good we'll add just a touch of tension here what you're gonna notice and you guys may not notice uh, may not know this when you uh, rotate that handle to tighten the tighten the blade what you're doing essentially this band wheel is going like this right so when it's loose you'll notice there's movement when you tighten that the blades gonna gonna go back into alignment with the other with the other band wheel so if you see movement there that's okay and once that looks good which I think it is good uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and tension the blade where it should be and then I'll rotate this by hand before I start it and uh, make sure everything's good. And uh, on the back here it says a range of 20 to 25 foot pounds for the tension on the blade. I've had great luck with 25 foot pounds. That's what I ran on my old HM130 for years and never had a problem. So that's what I use on this. All right, so I'm going to rotate this by hand. And the reason I rotate this by hand and obviously use caution, whatever you decide, I rotate this by hand very slowly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the blade right here. And I'm gonna watch the blade over there on that band wheel. And I'm watching to make sure that it's not creeping towards the front or the back. If I rotate it by hand and it's starting to creep already, then definitely when I start it, it's going to go flying. So I want to try to catch that before anything. Uh, sometimes you get away with not having to um, realign this, this follower band wheel. Sometimes you don't. Uh, we're just going to see what happens. So I'm just watching and I'm moving very slowly here. And what I'm noticing over there, I'm noticing that that blade is, is going backwards a bit and so I just want to make sure that it comes back to where it should if it keeps going backwards I got to stop okay we got that where it needs to be next time around or maybe another time I'll put out another video where I show you changing a blade in more more detail but put that on here okay let's cut
Alright guys, as you can see there, that cut effortlessly and that's how a blade's supposed to cut. I was pretty much just resting my hand on it and it was going ahead and doing it. Now uh, these little pieces here, these are an example of the high spots. When we were going through, notice how the blade wasn't cutting every single part of that, that length. It was only cutting the high spots off. That's why you get these guys. Look how many there were. One, two, three, four, five, six, there's a lot. So let's have a look at the board now, or the can. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you guys tell me? How to look down there. And I'm not talking the waves in the side, I mean the top. One more time, we'll just run our hand across it. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing right there. What I might do is, I might just take even one more little cut off there, just to be certain, and then we'll go ahead, flip it, and uh, make our lumber. Tell you guys there's just something about putting a nice sharp blade on the sawmill that really puts a smile on my face and i think it comes down to a how easy it is to saw i'm barely pushing i'm just sort of admiring it cut and b the quality of lumber these four pieces are what we just cut on the left side of all of these boards is the old blade the blade that should have been changed out for a sharp one prior to now have a look down it you guys see the waves in there Check it out over here. This one's pretty bad too. See the waves there? Not good, especially down there. Look at that one. Look at this one. You guys see that? That's bad. What happened is the blade rose up and then it dove down right close to this knot. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Here's the other ones. Check that out. No good. You can get a real sense of it down here. Same thing here. No good. Right? You guys can see that. It rose up there. Same thing right there at the other knots. Now, if we look at the right side of these boards, this, 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 and this, these were all cut with the brand new sharp blade. Have a look down there. No waves, perfectly straight. Same thing on the right side. Excuse me, on uh, this board on the right side. And lastly, this one. There is no waves in that. That is what you're looking for. If you guys have waves, in your lumber the answer is to get a sharp blade on there now here's what i'm thinking why does the blade when it starts to get dull start to dive and and uh, rise up well if you guys can imagine if the blade is not cutting because it's starting to get dull maybe you're putting a bit more force into the cut that blade can heat up if that blade heats up that metal expands in the blade and the tension drops just slightly because the blade is a little bit longer and i'm talking like very little but just a little bit will cause that blade tension to drop. If that tension drops, guess what's gonna to happen to that blade? It has the potential to wander. Mix in there the fact that the blade's been used a lot and well, maybe the teeth aren't exactly set where they should be 
and you got a big boatload of problems. So in a nutshell, if you guys have a issue where you've got wavy lumber and you don't want wavy lumber, before you start diving into, you know, taking that sawmill apart and figuring out the, the belts and the bearings and all this, that, and the other, put a sharp blade on there. See what happens. Nine times out of 10 in my experience, that'll correct your problem. Your lumber will be back to looking beautiful and you guys will be happy. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out my other videos. I got a bunch dealing with my brand new sawmill as well as my old one up there. And hopefully I see you guys next time.